All right, now it is time for our third and final segment of the show, and I'm so excited about this because we are welcoming on to our show today Chase Griffin, the senior quarterback on UCLA's roster. Uh, you know, Gatorade Player of the Year in high school, two-time winner of a national NIL Male Athlete of the Year from Open Doors and the NIL Summit. He has got a wide range of uh, campaigns and things he's been doing in the NIL space. And so, first and foremost, Chase, it's so great to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, again, the resume is pretty impressive. You've got a lot of different deals and things you've been working on. But before we get to that, let's start with the first things first. You've got quite a resume, obviously, on the football side of things and trying to navigate this world of education and all these different degrees you have. So give us sort of the resume. I want to have the Chase Griffin, Griffin resume straight from you because you've, you've got a lot going on here. I appreciate that. So I got to UCLA January of 2019. I got my bachelor's degree in public affairs from UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs in 2021, that summer. And then that fall, I started my master's in education, which I'll be graduating from in this, this spring. And then this fall, I'll start and I'll enroll in the UCLA Master's of Legal Studies program at the UCLA Law School. Okay, nice, so man. how in the world do you keep <laughs> up with all this stuff? I mean, you're obviously about to start spring ball, which is exciting. Um, looking ahead to the season, but to manage all this, plus NIL and all these different things, I mean, that's super impressive in and of itself. I think if you want something to get done, you give it to a busy person. And, you know, as an athlete, as someone who grew up playing instruments, doing well in school, uh, I'm used to always doing something, whether it be, you know, going to practice in the morning at 6 a.m. or going to violin lessons after school, going to practice after school, uh, whether it be, you know, training in the morning before school. I think having a, a habit of practicing your priorities every single day and staying focused has been integral to my success, not just in sports or the NIL space, but to life thus far. And I think in college, the people who end up, you know, reaping the most out of it are those who are able to stay true to what got them there. And uh, I consider it a blessing that I've been able to, you know, re remain myself no matter what opportunities or obstacles come my way. Sweet. So, Chase, what is uh, what are some of your life goals? Uh, obviously, I'm not going to say obviously. I'm, I'm assuming you want to play in the NFL, but um, let's say outside of football, what are some of your life goals? I think everything... Uh, football included sort of goes towards the same goals that I have and that's to build generational wealth early that way I can take care of my family the way that I want to uh, and do it in a way where I'm able to contribute to philanthropy and keep my heart and keep my faith uh, I think no matter what happens as long as I'm able to stay true to myself uh, that everything will handle itself the way that it should go uh, obviously I want to play in the NFL uh, I had the talent to, to get to college, and I believe that, you know, in the times I've played in college, I, I've demonstrated an ability to play very well. And there, I don't think there's a single person that's showing up to the facility every single day uh, dealing with the strength coaches, you know, paying attention to meetings when you're almost falling asleep and, and not wanting that to pay off in the form of, you know, getting to play more football. That being said, uh, I've never been the type of person to rely on one thing to get to my goals. Uh, I think God has blessed me with numerous talents and with each one of them, uh, I work hard to develop that piece of me uh, off the field in the NIL, whether it be on the production side or the, the content creation and talent side. Uh, I, I've built you know, a repertoire of tools over my experience in the branded space. And there's things I also want to help elevate in the space along with, you know, my peers. Um, I think right now, sometimes the media in the way that it covers NIL sometimes loses the, the point of focus of what's important in it. And at the end of the day, it is the storytelling of these college athletes that is very valuable in the space. And, uh, 
I'm using my platform now, especially with Uniworld and the Nile program, the NIL enrichment program that I have with them, uh, to both bring more brand investment into the college athlete space, but more importantly, help the media tell the stories of these athletes. I think what you'll see off of this will be more brands investing into the NIL space, but also sort of uh, for the first time, media being from the point of view directly from the athletes, being able to tell their stories to the public rather than having it be shaped by any type of program, coach, or anyone else. Uh, I think that's a very powerful tool when we look at the empowerment opportunity that NIL is, where if athletes are able to start telling their stories and educating each other, then you'll see more camaraderie and more of an uplifting nature of NIL rather than some of the scandals that we see based off what the media covers. What's the NIL enrichment program you're referring to? So, so with Uniworld Group, which is the, it's the longest lasting and largest multicultural ad agency in the country. Um, we have a program there where I, I'm helping, I'm an executive in residence there, where with the program, we have the brand side, they have brand, lots of brand partnerships and insight and lots of success representing and assisting these brands in the advertisement space. Now, if we merge that connection and that track record with the college athletes and uh, a mission that is, you know, well-designed and has a good heart, then we're able to partner with both media and brand sponsorships to empower athletes and help tell their stories in ways that are both profitable to them in the immediate sense, but more importantly, set them up for a future where they not only are educating their peers, but they're able to tell their stories in ways that are authentic to them. All right, so what are some of the brands that you've been working with that you've enjoyed the partnerships with? Uh, so my, my first brand deal was with Degree. Uh, it's, it was really amazing for me to, to start out in the NIL space with a brand like degree just because they are the number one in their space and they're a household name. I think everyone going into NIL didn't really know how it would go, uh, who would get deals. Was it only just the Bryce Youngs or, or the guys at Clemson's who would get those types of deals? But at the end of the day, it came down to my ability to market myself as a storyteller and having a story that brands wanted to align with. I go into every single deal with a values playbook where I consider my personal values, me being a believer, a winner, and a provider. And I look for other brands that match that and degree match that. At the same time, I also look for economic value. How much does this deal pay? Is it on par with my market price for other similar deals? And then third is community value. How do I take the economic value that I generated and turn it into empowerment? Um, I'm proud to say that from my partnership with the LA Food Bank, We've raised, we've raised over $22,000, uh, which is translated to almost 70,000 meals for children in the LAUSD school system who rely on subsidized lunch. And that was really important to me just because I grew up in a town and had teammates that helped me get to UCLA where them and their families and their brothers and sisters were on either free or subsidized lunch. So to be at a platform that I have now where I'm able to practice my vision that I have of me being philanthropic in the future. I'm able to practice that on the scale that I can now. That way I have the right habits, the right heart, and the right practice and know-how to do it in the future on the more grand scale. Thank you. Dang. I don't know. First of all, degree, everyone needs some deodorant, right? So that's a universal thing. <laughs> Everybody's got to have it. That's good. But number two, I just love your thought process and like I love the values playbook thought because I do think it's so important, as you said, to empower people to go into these deals, obviously go into this space uh, with, a, with A, with the proposition, but B, holding true to their values and knowing what's important to them and how that aligns with these particular brands because not every brand is for everyone. And I think that when you're developing these different uh, relationships and partnerships, it's so important to use that. And as someone in media, obviously, but 
I would say one of the biggest things I take from my job and I take very personally and take very seriously is the storytelling aspect and going out on the field and telling the stories of the athletes, the coaches, the fans that make it more than a game. And I love what you said because it is more than just I'm an athlete. I go out here and play on Saturdays with the hope of one day I'll be playing on Sundays. So I think that is amazing. And, you know, it really speaks to how you really landed this first NIL award, right, from the summit. This is the first year that it, the first year that this award's been given out. You get crowned over several high-powered athletes, like you mentioned, the Bryce Youngs and the ones that have, uh, you know, generated a lot of, uh, you know, success as well in the NIL space. Um, but, I, you know, I think it's, it's worth noting you becoming that first one have really set the stage and the tone for what people, um, you know, uh, can expect and athletes can expect kind of going forward. The other thing I Thank guess I, I'm really curious to know, you talk about the philanthropic side of things and how important that is. You know, and, and Kevin works in this space a lot with, uh, with Triumph NIL and what he does with his athletes, student athletes at, at Virginia Tech, and it is telling a story. And I think um, – from a philanthropic standpoint, you know, how do you believe the NIL space can really feed into that philanthropic side of things? Because there is the price tag, there is the money, there is the exchange for goods and services, but also you're doing so much more than that. Uh, and it's not just all about the, the, the bottom line price tag. Absolutely. I think it's not really up to me to tell another adult or a young adult what to do with their money. So if there are people who uh, with their NIL are saving all of it and practicing, you know, safe money habits, I have nothing wrong with that. In fact, I, I have a partnership with JP Morgan Chase where uh, part of it is helping to enrich others lives, especially college athletes uh, by helping them practice safe money habits uh, because in the long run, that's the most valuable thing you can learn while you're in college. Um, as far as the philanthropic side, it depends on person to person. I think often we forget when we talk about NIL that it is name, image, and likeness of that individual. Uh, the NIL for Chase Griffin is going to be based off of me, just like the NIL for Kevin is going to be based off of him and his values. Uh, I think people who have a giving heart and a heart for philanthropy and also a know-how and partnerships with infrastructure where they can best utilize whatever resources and platform they have to help people on a, a larger scale are going to see more of an impact made. Uh, that was part of the reason why I seeked out the LA Food Bank. Uh, I grew up serving at the Round Rock Serving Center back home about 20 miles northeast of Austin. And I saw the impact that that food bank had on the community. And while I was out here, I wanted to find a cause that was near and dear to me, but also one that I knew was extremely capable. That, um, you know, as a college athlete, as a college student, I don't have the millions uh, to be giving that, you know, God willing, I have in the future. Uh, but that doesn't mean I can't give and that doesn't mean I can't have an impact. So I wanted to find a partner that could maximize my impact and initiatives like Be The Match, uh, which is one of the best bone marrow registries out there or partnerships like the LA Food Bank have helped me use the dollar amounts that I'm able to safely give now and maximize those uh, in return for those that I'm trying to serve. Hey, uh, Coach Thump said you got plate pushes tomorrow, so make sure you... Uh, <laughs> Make sure you rest easy tonight. Don't even be surprised. Don't even be surprised. Hey, I'll tell you, look, it's right here. I'm telling you. You got to give us the backstory on this. You got to give us the backstory um, then, this Kevin and Chase. What's 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 the uh, what's the what's the backstory on on you two knowing this this, this coach? Uh, well, oh yeah, well he was my think, teammate in the league. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, uh, and then I know him. He, he's yeah. my strength coach. Yeah, he's my strength. Yeah, coach. He's the strength coach there now. Um, <laughs> hey, so, so, you know, we hear about like the, you know, some of the accolades, some of the things you like to do and like, and that you want to do for, you know, feeding people and philanthropy and things like that. Um, if you had to sum it up in a, in a sentence, um, who was Chase Griffin? I think my belief brand sort of encapsulates it well, or how I, how I sort of frame it where I consider myself a believer, a winner and a provider. 
Um, mm-hmm. As far as being a believer, it's what's most central to me, uh, my faith. And, and my belief in God, my faith uh, in Jesus has, has carried me my entire life. And being able to see how that faith has, has carried me through things that I considered obstacles and now looking back were really opportunities and stepping stones. Uh, I would not have changed anything in my journey. And I know that's easy to say, you know, at, at 22, but God willing, I'm saying the same thing at 80. Um, and then as far as being a winner, I, I try to win every day. And I think a lot of people have more opportunities than they realize. But when you have a mindset that allows for you to see everything as opportunities to win, uh, I wake up every single day more energized about making things happen rather than having to do things. Uh, There's probably some people that would, you know, just try to do their best or try to do well on this interview. I'm trying to be the best interview y'all have ever had. (laughs) <laughs> and by going into by going into every single interaction like that and treating everyone uh, in a way where you treat them with the utmost respect, like you try to be their best moment of the day, um, you see that the the relationships and opportunities you deliver on and build on end up just working together in ways that you wouldn't even see coming. But as long as you treat people well and keep a good heart and do your best and everything, I truly believe uh, that I'm going to get to where I need to go. And then as far as being a provider, my main motivator in life is being able to be the provider for my family, uh, that my father was for his family. And my father, he took us from working class, you know, the, the Griffins and the Seedons, we were always educated. Uh, we, we were always working class, but my father took us to middle class and I want to take us from middle class to wealthy. And in order to do that, I just have to, you know, keep playing my cards right, stay true to myself and my values, and continue to, you know, deliver on everything that I do. Amazing. Very Ooh. impressive. Thank yeah. you. That's, a, that's a good statement. We, we can all live by that, you know. Thank Believer, you. winner, awesome. and provider. It's yes, easy to yep. remember. It's good. That's really good. <laughs> I love that. Chase, Please. this was super informative. Um, I just love what you're doing. And again, you know, just talking about the philanthropic side of things, it's different for everybody. Um, but just kind of looking at the resume and giving back some of your NIL earnings. But really, again, it's also being front and center and being in front of these partnerships and also just kind of being the face of it. You know, whether it's giving your time, you know, just giving your, your um you know, your uh, expertise, obviously your experiences, I think that all falls into that same umbrella. And I just think it's amazing. And again, you know, giving over 22,000 in NIL earnings to your community there in Los Angeles and your hometown of Round Rock, Texas is amazing. Um, And then of course, winning the first NIL Mount Athlete of the Year uh, at the NIL, for the NIL Summit. And um, that, that to me is just you know, speaks volumes to what you're building and what you're sharing with people around you. So again, thank you for this opportunity to chat with you. We'll definitely, uh, you know, uh, keep an eye out and and see what you got going on uh, in the future. And would love to maybe get you back on the show down the road as you continue to build uh, this this amazing platform that you've created for yourself and for those around you. So uh, of course, you can follow Chase Griffin um, on Twitter and Instagram at chase QB 11. And, uh, we appreciate your time on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Kevin. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Hey, I'm a hokey, but I guess I can root for, uh, Bruins a little bit, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate it. No, I, I, know, I know Logan Thomas. He's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Nice to meet you, man. I love it. Absolutely.